They can't all be Sharknado. I like movies. I like good movies. Sometimes I even adore bad movies. But there are some out there that I just can't even. Movies I can't bear to watch again. I flip the channel if any of them are on. They cause me pain. So here's a quick list of the 10 top or bottom worst movies I've ever seen. If you like any of these movies, that is cool. This is only my opinion, and I know I can have unusual taste myself. And if you enjoy a movie, don't let me take it away from you. Enjoy it. You do you. So let us begin. Number 10. Battlefield Earth. Let's start with an easy target, right? This movie's bad. Uh, the story's bad. The characters are mostly forgettable cutouts. Mostly. Travolta seems to be having fun as an alien turtle, and that's its only saving grace to me. Alien, but still relatable. <laughs> the rest is an illogical mess that thankfully didn't spawn the series that they were intending. Number 9. Catwoman. Whew, okay, this is Catwoman in name only. I don't know who let Halle Berry change the entire character, the premise, the setting, or anything else that defined Catwoman. Deep Sage jumps around like a cat. The acting was laughable. The direction was like a too long music video. And the visual effects, especially the digital Catwoman, looked really sad. Sharon Stone's villain was hilarious though. Her makeup makes her indestructible. Maybe it's Maybelline. The only claws this production had is the ones they used to shred the script. Number 8. Lady in the Water. This could have been interesting. You had two worlds, humans and magical creatures. And I kept wanting to fall asleep. I love Paul Giamatti. He's one of my favorite actors. He's so much better than this. Bryce Dallas Howard did nothing during this movie. And the weird characters? The film critic who critiques his own death? The bodybuilder who looked like Quagmire when he discovered internet porn? M. Night Shyamalan as the most important role of the movie? And once it was over, I felt like nothing significant happened. What do you see? This made me realize that M. Night Shyamalan might not be able to reclaim his sixth sense level of awesome. This movie, immediately forgettable, is all wet. Number 7. Book of Shadows, Blair Witch 2. Holy shit do I hate this movie. I liked the first one. It was a new experience, it was visceral, and it stuck with you. This had so little in common with the first one. It had none of the mystery or suspense, the characters were all unlikable puppets that couldn't act, the non-linear storytelling killed any drama you might have had, and then it just ended. No explanations except the witch did it. This had rushed into production and studio interference smeared all over it. The only good thing it had going for it it wasn't a found footage movie. Number six, Batman and Robin. You knew this would be here. Since Burton left after Batman Returns, Schumacher started sliding the franchise towards a more family-friendly, campy feel. Less like Frank Miller's dark vision, more like the 60s TV show. I love a good pun, just ask my family. But Mr. Freeze's ice puns killed the tragic nature of his character. Chill. Uma Thurman's Poison Ivy overdramatically talked to herself like she was reading a comic book's thought bubbles. And the less said about Bane, the better. Batgirl was wasted. Found the Batcave. She knows who we are. I guess we just have to kill her. Robin was... there? And Clooney was embarrassed. If this movie killed the franchise, it was a mercy killing. Number 5. Fifty Shades of Grey. I had to. I read the book out of morbid curiosity, and I felt like I was reading Tina Belcher's butt fiction. I thought maybe the movie would fix the laughable dialogue. Nope. To what do you owe your success? I exercise control in all things, Miss Steele. It must be really boring. Gray is tortured and therefore cannot love. He's still an abusive ass, but I have to say, Anastasia Steele has one of the coolest names ever. It's just more suited for a comic book villain or a Bond villain. And don't fool yourself. If Mr. Grey wasn't insanely rich, this would be an entirely different movie. I haven't seen Fifty Shades Darker yet, but I expect that'll be on the next list I do. If anyone needs a good spanking, it's the creator of this atrocity. Number four, Sucker Punch. Wow, did the commercials lie or what? 
I can't really say lie, the trailers were vague, showing mostly the weird fantasy segments and revealing very little about the movie itself. Instead, it's a movie within a movie within a movie. The real world segments add up to a heist escape film. The fantasy parts are used to visually represent certain parts of the movie. They're also the most interesting, mostly because they're so visually stunning. But it, it amounts to something like, here, we need to steal this object, but we'll portray it as a gunfight on a speeding train. You will need to find five items. The first is a map. You know, ultimately there's just little substance and it ends with the heroine and the audience lobotomized. Number three, Alone in the Dark. In 1992, there was a video game called Alone in the Dark. It was the first time a computer game ever scared me. Sure, it was low res and kind of cheesy, but it had an atmosphere. Ancient ghosts, zombies, an evil god, all kinds of creatures. And it borrowed heavily from Lovecraft. A movie with those elements shouldn't lose. How did it fail? Two words, Uva Bowl. <sighs> I guess I have to box them now. All the cool stuff in the game is replaced by bimbo scientists, evil doctors, crappy CGI, and Tara Reid. It lacked any scares, tension, or characters with any chemistry. And why does the poster look like Geiger's alien playing peekaboo? Despite bombing at the box office, this shit burger spawned a sequel. I hear it's better, but I, I just can't bring myself to watch it. This isn't the only Uva Bowl movie that would have been on this list. I just had to pick one. And I, I just don't yet have the strength to rewatch another one. But I, I will. You know, assuming he doesn't see this. Number two. Highlander 2. Highlander was awesome. You know what made it awesome? Not Connery, not Lambert, not even Mr. Krabs. It was awesome because it ended. It told a grand story that spanned centuries. It was epic. And when it ended, you get fulfilled. Connor McCloud gets his reward of mortality. Happy ending for everyone. Sequel? Um, all the immortals are gone. Even McCloud is normal. Wait, they're aliens now? Exile to Earth. All right. You realize this retcons how they met in the first movie. It rewrites their origin, the very concept of the quickening. There can only be one. Remember that? Hollywood, you should have listened. And the number one worst movie I've ever seen? <sighs> Lord help me. Freddy got fingered. What, what, what can I say about this one? Tom Green made a career out of pranking people. Some foolish movie studio gave him a movie budget. This movie was strange. It's full of dick jokes, gore, it's offensive, it's immature, it's surreal, it's repulsive, yet at times it's kind of hard to look away like a traffic accident. The weird part? It might be an evil work of genius. <laughs> I wasn't expecting that to happen. I'm not saying it's good, but it's oddly unforgettable. 16 years later and people are still talking about it. The levels of absurdity are absurd. His character is less a human being and more like a caricature of how a disappointed parent looks at his disappointing child. It, it is not good. In fact, it's terrible. But I suspect that was the goal all along. They set out to make the worst movie, with the worst personality, the worst jokes, the worst dialogue, and the worst performances. And the joke was on all of us. Only one scene made me giggle, and that's because it was just so weird. Danny, would you like some sausage? Danny, would you like some sausage? It got my ass into the theater because I had to see what it was about. And so the joke was on me. And those were the top or bottom worst movies I've ever seen. I'm sure there's more out there, but I've kind of blocked them out for now. I'll get to them someday. Some may even get a review. And remember, if you liked any of these movies, don't sweat it. It'll be our little secret. I hope you enjoyed this list. And if you did, hit the little thumbs up button right there. And subscribe, because you know you want to. Did I miss any movies that you consider the worst? Are there any that you disagree with? Tell me why below. This is The Newbie, and as always, thanks for watching.